Entrepreneurship is hard, so let's fix that and dive into our hero's journeys. This is Taking Flight, an entrepreneur's journey, and I'm Sarah Torville. Join me as we delve deep into the passions, expertise, and experiences of those already in flight. This show is sponsored by EO Atlanta. Hello and welcome everybody to the EO Atlanta's Taking Flight podcast. I always enjoy our conversations with all of our guests, but I'm particularly excited to speak to our guest today. He is an author, a speaker, a designer, a mentor, an inspirational entrepreneur, a leader, a hard worker, founder at Six Pack Dads, which I want to know more about, co-founder at StuffForGreeks.com, co-founder at Zeus's Closet, and past chapter president 2018-2019 of EO Atlanta, which is what we guys are all part of. So. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. I'm so happy to be here and thank you for doing this podcast. Uh, this is really important and um, let's continue to amplify the stories of our members. Yeah, I 100% agree with you and the stories are amazing and we just are getting some really great feedback on just the the impact it's having on, on other entrepreneurs. So um, we're going to do the same today. So Let's get going, Ethan. I really, um, like I say, I know you're involved in so many things, but I'd love to know when you started your journey, what did you think, what did you get right? What a great question. Um, and what comes to mind when I hear this is Steve Jobs' commencement speech, uh, the really popular one where he said, you know, in life, you can't make sense. You can't connect the dots looking forward, but you can only connect the dots looking backward. So what I got right at the time, I didn't know I was getting right, of course, but um, I think back to when I was in college, I was always into art and design. I was an art major. My parents were like, you know, artists don't make any money until after they're dead, but I was stubborn. Uh, so I did it anyway. So I ended up being that in my fraternity, I ended up designing all of the jackets and shirts and flyers and merchandise and things like that. And um, I remember sketching out this jacket and I gave it to one of my fraternity brothers to go, it was like, hey, go get it made. You know, I, I designed it, you go get it made. Right. And they found this company and the jackets came back a few weeks later and they looked horrible. Right. I mean, horrible, nothing like my sketch. And I said, and they didn't collect money up front. So I said, right. I'm not buying that. And I just, I, I had zero tolerance for anything less than excellence. And now looking back on it, and that was some 25 years ago, that has been the constant throughout. And um, I, I just always have had a high standard of excellence in everything that I do. And because of that, you know, we ended up creating stuff for Greeks. It started out as a school project, but we ended up making these jackets and they're in high demand from people across the country. And it's really th that standard of excellence. For example, we sell a $2,000 fraternity jacket, whereas most of these Greek stores is like a $200 fraternity jacket, but people right. buy ours because of the excellence that is behind the brand that we've established over the years. Mm -hmm. So looking back on it, you know, it seems things seem crazy at the time, but that that tolerance of um, only excellence only has carried me far in life. Mm -hmm. But where, where do you think that excellence came from initially? <laughs> like, because it must have happened uh, before you, you know, you were in a fraternity. I know exactly where it came from. Yeah. My mother. <laughs> <laughs> what was that your mother? Did you say that was my, that was my mom? Yeah. yeah. I get, I recall a time in particular, um, I think I was probably in about fifth grade or something and I was struggling in, in one class. It was like a science class mm -hmm. and I, I was just really, really battling with it. And I, I wasn't doing well. I wasn't comprehending whatever the subject was. And then we had an exam and I got an 85 on the exam and I was so excited. I came, I was like, mom, look, I got an 85. Mm -hmm. And she looked at the paper and frowned up and said, what happened to the other 15 points? And that just always stuck with me. And I was like, okay, hey, there's yeah. there's just zero tolerance for anything less than excellent. Yeah. Wow. And that's 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 hard to that's hard to adhere to that standard. So you've done obviously an amazing job. Uh I can't wait to see these jackets. So <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen one, but um that's amazing though. So so tell me, like on your journey as being an entrepreneur entrepreneur, has there been any really specific co pilots that have come along with you? Oh, yeah, of course. So my, my main co-pilot, to tell you this story, um, while I was in college around that same time, I'm walking across campus and come across this sorority girl, this bubbly sorority girl who 
introduces introduces herself to me and um we become friends for a few years and then we ended up dating later and then we said hey what if we went in on this business together we have this business idea to start this paraphernalia company for fraternities and sororities um i was an art major i had no business sense i didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs um you know i i had no idea what i was doing but she she was a business major right. i was an art major so we said let's go half um we put in 350 dollars each so i went in half on a business with my girlfriend right and here we are now 21 years later or so and we we've been married 20 years we've been in business we've been business partners longer than we've been married but we just celebrated our 20 year anniversary um and yeah she she's my rock she is yeah my 50 50 partner and my co-pilot in life and in business. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. That's an incredible and unusual story because you know, they you hear that, you know, don't go in business with your, um, your spouse, but you'd already got in business before you even became a spouse to each other. So that's, yeah. that's great. That's very, very incredible. So she is just as much into the business as you are. Is that right? She is. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Started it with me from, from day one. Right. And I mean, and now we've established a business to a point where we have other ventures. She has a podcast, uh, right. Become Your Own Boss podcast. Um, you know, I have books and speaking. We, we'll talk yeah. about some of that stuff later. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, we, we've grown it together. And uh, we also have two wonderful kids together. Yeah, I, I love it. And I, I love that story. Thank you for sharing that. So what is a challenge that you and your team, you and your wife or the other people within the company are, are really like, trying to solve currently is there something specifically that or you've solved it recently can you share that with us yeah sure um so a problem that we solve as far as well kind of two things so my company is zeus's closet what we what we make is we commemorate life's most meaningful events mm -hmm. and you know we do this through very specialized high-end embroidered garments it's funny because when COVID happened Man, I, it was a nightmare. And I thought, oh my God, we're not going to survive this. Nobody's going to order. This is the last thing on their mind, right? Um, to order some embroidered clothing. But we actually went up during COVID because people cherish those life events, those graduations okay. that they couldn't go to. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to have something to commemorate this. So they'll spend $500 on a custom graduation stole. Mm -hmm. Or if they didn't have the opportunity to have their paternity crossing or probate show, the musicians that we work with, they couldn't go to the award ceremonies. They couldn't go on tour and perform. So they wanted to have things to commemorate and to show off online. So it's it's a very important thing. And our our, our tagline is we're like a tattoo shop for your clothes. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the reason that people get tattoos is to show their passions off to the world. Mm -hmm. um, it goes back to like the, our tribal nature as humans. Or if you actually tattoo something on your flesh, it means that much to you. So for us to be a tattoo shop for your clothes, you're able to display your passions to the world, show your passion on your fashion. So that's the problem we saw with Zeus's Closet. Now, as I've evolved in my entrepreneur journey and in my leadership roles, and I've begun speaking more, I've actually started coaching entrepreneurs on whole life success because I've seen how uh, it's a dangerous road. And you probably know people like this who, who've had tunnel vision, chasing after uh, revenue growth or money, and neglecting their health, neglecting their relationships, neglecting their family, and things fall apart. In fact, I, I had a friend that, that committed suicide and, and nobody saw it coming. Um, he was an entrepreneur and from the outside looking in, it's like, man, he's flying on private jets. He's developing real estate. He has a beautiful family. It, it just really shook me up to the point where I'm like, I want to help other people not experience that, but to have it all in every dimension of life where you don't have to sacrifice um, anything that truly matters, but you can have it all in what I call the six dimensions of success, which are your spirituality, your intellect, your money, your physical presence, your love and relationships, and your entertaining experiences. Right. So that's what I teach it in my speaking and my programs is how to constantly calibrate life so that you can have it all in all of those areas. Right. So, so within that, within those things, what challenge those? There's something specific. Obviously, COVID, you were able to not suffer like thank thank the lord like some other companies mm -hmm. um suffered um but um is there a challenge not so much that you're solving but a challenge that you're going through in your business or that you've resolved oh yeah man yeah. 
I have a litany of challenges I could tell you. 20 something, years, 20, yeah, something significant you want to share. Years. Yeah. Yeah, man. One time we went through this lawsuit and, um, man, we just got our teeth kicked in. Like our back was up against the wall. Um, and it's funny because this was around the time that I started in EO. And we were a very, um, yeah, I, I, at the time I didn't know about having an actual profitable business. So revenues were right. high, but our profit margins were very thin. Mm -hmm. And then we had to fight this lawsuit. So we were hiring expensive lawyers and we're just stacking on debt, losing money. And I was faced with like, geez, are we going to have to file bankruptcy here? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it was a really, really nasty experience, probably eight months of like yeah. pure hell. Yeah. So what I did, I leaned on my forum, um, and some other people in EO and someone gave me the, the uh, experience share. Hey, you need a lawyer with, with a big letterhead because that, that's what I did. I was in a very similar right. situation. You get a big attorney to fight for you because I, the, I went with a budget attorney, which is right. not a smart thing to do. No. So I ended up firing that attorney, hired the big letterhead attorney, and we ended up mm -hmm. uh, counter suing the other party and we prevailed. But in that process, you know, what happened? Well, quite a few things happened. Well, first of all, I was so stressed out and I was getting out of shape and, um, my family life was falling apart because it was affecting all those yeah, other everything. areas, right? Yeah. So I just, I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this pull me down in every area. And that's when I decided to train for and complete my first marathon during uh -huh. the middle of this lawsuit. <laughs> so, and you know, training for a marathon, marathon, for those that don't know, is 26.2 miles. It takes hours and hours of running yeah. per day to prepare for that. Yeah. Um, so while I'm running, I'm, I'm listening, I'm just feeding my brain with like business yeah podcasts, books, and so forth, so that I could fight this battle and change my business model so that we could survive. So when we came out of that, we actually ended up shifting our business model and becoming more profitable than we were before. And we became less dependent on certain clients. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, but it makes sense, so much sense to me. I mean, I'm, I am, I am, I used to be a runner. I, I, I don't run so much anymore. I do Orange Theory, but there's a bit of running. Oh, um, but that running is a mental, you're right. You're able to mentally think things through and solve problems when you're running. So mm. I'm imagining that was very therapeutic to you and very goal orientated that you can still control a situation, you know, even when everything around you feels like it's falling apart. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And you, you have to take the time and pause and get that, that yeah. mental clarity. Yeah. Um, meditation is another big part of my life that, that I learned. Mm -hmm. And I mean, running can be very meditative as well. Yeah. But yeah. how often do we just go, go, go. And we don't take oh, yeah. time to, to think and declutter yeah. and get that clarity that we need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, on that point, I'd like to just share, um, a story from my perspective on that. Cause I've always found it. My husband, whenever we've had, and we've had some pretty significant kind of crises during our marriage in terms of like, we lived in Dubai in 2008 when the economy crashed. Mm. And it was a very difficult time because you're, he was employed to be in Dubai. And when you don't have a job anymore, you have to leave. And so, you know, it was a very, it was a difficult time, but what did he do? He went on this amazing spiritual health journey. Oh, wow. Yeah. During a time when I felt like everything was falling apart and I was, you know, my view was like, you know, I just, I need a glass of wine and I just need to just, you know. His view was like, no, 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 I'm going to cleanse. And that's how he's always coped with big life issues is to take the, the approach you said, Ethan. And it's, it's amazing. I find it amazing watching people like that. And it's not like I go the other extreme. I'm not an unhealthy person, but I don't have that same, you know, to really take that initiative and delve deep into who you are to bring that clarity. So I admire you for doing that. That takes a lot of willpower and strength to do that. Yeah. And it can seem counterintuitive to, to pause and, you know, the logical approach is fix this problem that I have yeah, right here yeah. in front of this crisis. But sometimes you have to go a different direction and, and really focus on yourself, your, your yeah. mental health, your spiritual health, your physical health, yeah. nothing else matters if you don't have those things in check. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. That's a, thank you for sharing that too. So is there a favorite book right now that we always love to ask our guests, because I feel like the knowledge share there is huge. Is there something you're reading or something which really sticks out to you, you can share with, with our listeners. Yeah, man, I, I am a voracious reader, um, probably read over 
500 business books. I don't know. My Gosh. Audible is crazy. Uh, plus podcasts and learning. I, I added it up the other day. I probably spent over a million dollars on, like literally on business learning and education. So, man, it's hard for me to pick one book. Yes. Um, now, of course, my book, and I'm not trying to give a shameless pl plug here, but my book, I've taken all this business knowledge and right. synthesized it and put it through my life experiences, the challenges, the ups and downs in every aspect of my life. And because I wanted it to exist in the world and it's done really well in the marketplace. It's coming up on, on our one year anniversary, uh, since we launched wealth beyond money, I right. uh, came hit the bestseller list in like 50 different categories. I'm very thankful for that. That's amazing. That the word is getting out there. Most recently, uh, though I read winning by Tim Grover mm -hmm. and Tim Grover, uh, I previously read his book relentless that came out a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But Tim Grover is the personal trainer for the greats like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, uh, these guys that that, are, that just dominate life. And he really talks in this book, Winning, um, he explores the dark side of, of the right. psychology of constantly winning and, and the toll it takes on people and some of the mental health issues. And it really opened my eyes to some things I hadn't considered before and the pressures that we put on ourselves. And, you know, um, my biggest takeaway, like I'm... I, only competing with myself. Yeah. I want to outdo, I want to be the best version of Ethan, I'm not competing with anyone else. Yeah. You know, what does that take to constantly push the bar higher and push the bar higher? You know, what kind of toll does that take on you? So I, I highly recommend that book, especially if you're an, an ambitious, high powered entrepreneur, like we have in, in a lot of EO members, um, winning by, by Tim Grover. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. Great. So what excites you about the future? What does your future of flight look like? Where are you heading? Tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more speaking, like really, um, uh, you know, just sharing my message out to the world with Zeus's closet. We've went from being just, um, a, a retail provider of embroidered jackets to now providing a platform for business owners through our stitched for success program, right. where we help, we be, we become a platform for people who want to have their own clothing brand mm -hmm. or even swag for their cause or their nonprofit organization or their business where they can have their own online store and actually earn revenue from that. But we handle all of the fulfillment on the back end for them. Right. So that's the the platform that we're moving into now. Great. And um, it's going great. I mean, we recently had jackets on the Grammys. So a lot of musicians are kind of tuning in and like, hey, you know, yeah. I want you to design our stuff because it's that high end. It's not just like your T-shirts that you can get anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's more of your high end gear. And um, I'm also excited about just my family life. And my kids are eight and 12. Mm -hmm. My daughter is into acting. Right. And little did I know that, you know, when someone's an actor and, she, and they get signed with an agent, that becomes in their in their child. Well, that becomes a part-time job for the parent. Oh, yes. Because I have to get her to all of these auditions yes. that pop up last minute. Um, so a lot of my time has been going to that, and that's been an unexpected turn, but a welcome one. So I'm excited about her future in that as well. That's great. And Atlanta's a great location. Oh, yes. All these up-and-coming actors, definitely. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. So I would love to learn a little bit more about who you are, Ethan. Like some key milestones. Like, can you kind of share with me? Um, you know, I know you're, 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 you know, obviously you're here in Atlanta and I, I understand about your businesses and you definitely, I know you're great at art. Has there, has there been any other key milestones in your life that kind of led to the point of you becoming an entrepreneur? So I'll tell you my story. So I'm all about change in evolution. I believe that, um, if I had, if I had 30 seconds for everyone in the world to hear my message, mm -hmm. it's this, like you are not stuck where you are, anything you don't like about your life. You can change, you can evolve, yeah. you can design the exact life that you want to live. And when I, you asked who I am, and uh, that's funny because when I think about my previous life, um, I've become a whole different person. But, yeah. you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I, I was a hustler. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was, um, I got in a lot of trouble when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I even got kicked out of college for a semester and um, ended up arrested twice by the age of 19. I remember getting called into the president's office at, at UGA. His name is mm -hmm. Michael Adams. And um, I thought he was going to expel me, but right. you know, he showed mercy and only suspended me <laughs> Good. For, for one semester. So I graduated, but with an art degree and a bit of a criminal record, 
I, I wasn't able to find a good job and I yeah. was unemployed for years, um, taking odd jobs um, at night while working, or while learning graphic design during the day. And uh, one of those jobs, I was working at a, a strip club in a real dangerous part of Atlanta. I was taking out the trash and cleaning up the bar. I, I wasn't stripping. <laughs> but <I> was... <laughs> <laughs> that would be a whole other podcast. Yeah, that's a different <laughs> podcast. <laughs> But, um, but it was, it was a humiliating job. I had to clean up when people got sick and, um, I just knew that there was something better for me. And then the DJs at the strip club ended up hiring me to do the graphics, to do the promotions for the club. Right. But I couldn't even use that in my portfolio because oh. it was too raunchy. Uh, and I felt like really stuck in that moment in life. And, you know, have you ever had a moment when you feel like the universe is trying to just tell you something like, do this, do this, do this, and you ignore it. And then you finally just get knocked down yeah. or something that, and it mm -hmm. shows you. Mm -hmm. Well, one night um, on my way to the club, I got carjacked at gunpoint oh. right here in Atlanta. And um, it, it's, it scared me to death. I thought this guy was going to kill me. I mean, right. look in his eyes and everything. I took off running, hopped over a fence. I heard my car screeching away in the background and it had all of my stuff in it, all of my equipment and everything. And wow. I, I was left with nothing. And at that, at that moment, I had this epiphany. I was like, this is, you know, I have talents that are designed for something greater mm -hmm. and I'm not going to use them for this anymore. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, I took my life, did a complete 180. Mm -hmm. And like 30 days later, that's when I ended up finally getting a full-time job as a graphic designer at a newspaper. I landed some big name clients like Tyler Perry uh, before he was like huge Tyler Perry, right. but I ended up working with him for 10 years in my graphic design business. That's when Stuff for Greek started taking off. Then we opened Zeus's closet. Wow. You know, now we have two locations and we, we got written up in the, um, the AJC in the Atlanta Journal Constitution business section, like four times in one year. Incredible. And things were just like, I had yeah. finally gotten an alignment. Yeah. And then, so there was this really significant moment that showed me, um, uh, we, we had won this business award from UGA. It was like the Bulldog 100. Yeah. And, um, we, when I went on stage to get the award, the person who presented me with the award was the same president that had kicked me out of college a decade earlier. Now he was handing me a trophy on stage for this business award. It's amazing. And, and it's, it's not about the award, but it's that full circle moment yeah. when you realize 100%. I was out of alignment. Now I'm in alignment. So that is what I want for, for everyone out yeah. there. You know, if things are feeling off, if you're feeling depressed, you're feeling down, it's like something's just not right. Mm -hmm. Before you get knocked down, before you face one of those near death experiences, like getting yeah. carjacked, you know, you can make that, sh that mental shift and get in alignment with your true purpose. And that's when you, you have the wealth and the happiness yeah. um, and everything that you want in life. Yeah. Man, that's a story. I just, yeah, you're right. There becomes, there is that epiphany moment for you. That sounds like it was pretty severe. Oh yeah. Um, I wonder if there's a way to kind of gain that clarity before the epiphany moment. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's what I want people to do. Like, I don't want you because sometimes, no. yeah. sometimes you might not be able to recover from that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't. Yeah. I was lucky that, that that situation could have went very differently oh, right? yeah. by, by yeah. the hair of a trigger. Literally, I could yeah. not be here. I could be disabled or yeah, anything. You know? yeah. So I want, I want people to catch it before it happens, but you got to have that intuition, right? You got to yeah. have that mental clarity. Say, mm -hmm. no, it's time to make that shift. Yeah. There's this concept called post-traumatic greatness um, that, that, that they talk about, I think, in the New York Times. And when they look at people who have suffered, like, trauma experiences, I'm sorry, it's called post-traumatic growth. Right. Um, but people who have suffered traumatic experiences, well, a large percentage of them end up growing even stronger in right. certain areas because of that traumatic experience. So it's called post-traumatic growth. Right. And... I'm fascinated with, well, if we, if you could do that, it's just a mental shift. Really. You just start, you have new behaviors and new habits and new activities because of this trauma that sparked it. Right. Well, how can you trick your brain into doing that without the trauma? Yeah. And I believe that you can. And I, I go through a, a behavior modification process. It's one of the things that I talk about in my book, um, wealth beyond money, but I believe that you can. And when you learn how to do that and you can, uh, it's almost like computer software. You uninstall things that aren't working for you and you yeah. install new behaviors and new processes to evolve into the best version of yourself. Yeah, that sounds, yeah. And I need to go and read about that. But again, that's the, the trauma having to happen for, 
for greatness to happen. It's um, it's just sad that some people have to go through so much trauma to yeah, get to the greatness. So um, I love the fact you're working with people to try and uncover it before the trauma starts. So, and maybe this is a nice lead into my next question. Um, like, are you able to see, so and I'm not talking about Zeus's closet, but like, you know, you talk about your, your um, you've written a book, obviously you go around speaking. I know you're very involved in leadership. Have you seen some stories of the impact that, you know, your story has on other people and how it's impacted their lives? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's the biggest return. You know, yeah. when I go speak in the, in the books and stuff, it's not about, it's not about the money. I don't, you no. know, I don't need the money, mm -hmm. but that in, the thank you notes I get in the mail. I mean, I have a collection over there on my other desk of just the unsolicited thank you notes about, Hey, something you said impacted my yeah. life and made me change and take a different direction. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I have countless examples, whether it's in in business or if it's someone choosing to switch careers and, and they go ahead and make that leap or, you know, even in fitness, you know, I work with, it's all about the, the whole person. So that's how six pack dad started because I shared my fitness journey and how I went from being an out of shape, overweight kid with asthma who never worked out until he was 30 years old to being in the shape I am now mm -hmm. and actually ended up on a magazine cover in my forties. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if, if I can do it, anybody can do this. It, there's a step-by-step -step formula. Here's how you do it. So yeah. I created a program to help people. So when I get the notes, like, man, I lost 30 pounds because of what you taught me. Yeah. I feel like when you have a new body, I mean, you just feel like oh, yeah, you yeah. have a whole new life. Yeah. And, um, that's just so rewarding to me to be able to make yeah. that impact in people's lives. Yeah. That's great. I love, thank you. Um, I, so I love this next question. It's always get different answers. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how you answer. I think I, I know the answer, but if you were to do this all again, Ethan, would you do it all over again? Everybody has answers. Yes. to this, right? <laughs> well, well, apart from one person. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I binge listened to the podcast. I didn't, okay. I, like, I got to find the one. I have, well, no, I no, you won't hear it. It's not been aired yet. It was the one I mentioned I did yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. I get it. Um, <laughs> So yes, I would. And you know, that question, um, it makes me think there's this thing called the law of polarity. And mm -hmm. in this universe we live in, it's, it's full of opposites, you know, off, on, light, dark, up, down. So everything that happens in our lives, even though it may seem horrible at the time, there's something good that comes from it. Like it, it has to be. Yeah. It, and sometimes it's hard to see the goodness that comes from it but there is always an, an equal part good for something bad that happens to you. So, yeah, I mean, when I look back at all the pain and all the struggles mm -hmm. and um, all of the horrible decisions that I've made and the failures that I've had in life, I wouldn't be where, I'm at, where I am today if it weren't for those. Yeah. And I wouldn't have the story to tell to help others if it weren't for those challenges. So, yeah, I mean, as, as many rough parts as, it, as there were, I would do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Now, I wish I could do it all over again with the knowledge that I have, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, that um, would be so much better. But yeah, yeah not possible. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world. I love Good. it. Good. Glad to hear that. Really, really glad. That means that you're happy where you're at as well. And, you know, and I think it's good to know that good. you have to feel wholesome as an entrepreneur. We're always seeking different things, I know, but feeling like, you know, you made the right decision of where you're at right now. Which yeah, is great. wholesome. And I'm, I'm glad you said the word happy. It's funny. Yeah. Um, when my book publisher was told me the areas where we hit number one bestseller, mm -hmm. self-help happiness was one of the categories. Right. And it, it's funny because I don't really use the word happy a lot. It seems kind of like pie in the sky. Right. And, you know, it's not really my word of choice. Right. And it's all, that word is only in the book three times I did a search. Right. Um, but that's really what it's about is happiness. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. But I've designed my life where I never have to sit in traffic because I hate traffic. Yeah. Um, I never work on Mondays. Mondays are my focus days, my free days to do it. Right. I'm what I don't take any meetings, right. calls on Mondays. Sometimes I'll do EO stuff because I get joy out of that. Yeah. But yeah, because most people hate Mondays. Most people hate traffic. Yeah. Well, it's like, I'm going to de design my life so I don't have to mm -hmm. deal with those two mm -hmm. things. And that's just an example of how if you put your mind to it, you really can design the exact life that you want. I agree. I'm wondering though, Ethan, whether everybody else is doing the same thing because a strange thing is happening right now. I live up in, um, you know, uh, the north side of Atlanta, OTP, 
And mm. on a Monday, the best traffic, there's, there's the least traffic on the roads going to the really? office in Buckhead, honestly. And every oh. Monday, it used to be the opposite before COVID, didn't it? Right. Um, but every Monday I fly to work literally in 25 minutes, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday takes me 45. So some people are doing exactly the same as you <laughs> even, and they are staying at home and saying, Monday, I'm not going to sit in traffic. So, um, I'm glad that's happening because I have to sit in traffic. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, it's very weird. I'm like, this is so weird because Mondays would normally be that day. So I think people are doing that you know, cope that working where they don't have to go in every day overseas. So they choose That's Tuesday, good. Wednesday, Thursday. So, mm -hmm. um, well, if you do have to sit in traffic and I'm sure you do this, yeah, turn that into your university where you're educating yourself. Oh, I do always. Yeah. I, I look at, unfortunately, this is not always, I do look at every moment as a means to grow. And oh, so yes. I, I'm just not somebody, you know, I wish I could sit back. So no, I'm constantly listening. I'm I listening to it. strength, strength to strength right now. Um, and strength I cannot, to strength. Yeah, and okay. I cannot remember the name of the um, author. Um, I have to check that out. But it's extremely good. It's about your kind of curve in your life. So you've had strength at some point in your career. Most people think that we kind of then get to um, retirement, and many of us are not happy because we had so much success in our lives, and it's now, what do we do? You know, it, we're on the demise, and it's how you go from strength and then take the strength up another notch altogether. So mm. it's kind of forward thinking. It's really good for my EO group because some people have got, gone through some exits mm. and they, what do they do next? So, um, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. yeah thank I, I need that. to just quickly find, I can tell you the name of the author. It's on my audible right now from strength to strength. And it's by Arthur C. Brooks. Okay. And, and it's, it's excellent. Excellent. For anybody at a point in their life where maybe they have done an exit, maybe they're making, they're looking at, you know, what the next, you know, 20 years look like beyond running a business, et cetera. It's, and if you're about to go into retirement, it's a great way to kind of really feed your mind with positivity around how you can go even, be even stronger on the next one. Uh, I'm definitely going to check that yeah. out. That seems very relevant. Yeah. And, really, and really you know, good. since this is an EO podcast, before we run out of time, I just want to share with anyone listening. Um, I know this is great for members to connect, but if someone's listening who's not a member of EO, it absolutely changed my life. Mm -hmm. I, I've been in EO now for like a, a quarter of my life, which is, which is crazy. You know, I went through the EO Accelerator program right. and EOA was my MBA because I right. did not have business knowledge. So definitely check it out. And, mm -hmm. um, and Sarah, thank you, thank you for, for your time. We are volunteering on the board and, and doing this podcast. It's going to be an honor to work with you. Over the next year, it's going to yeah, be exciting excited. fun on the Marcom team. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be doing it. I'm looking forward to your professionalism as well, um, Ethan, and all your knowledge. Um, you know, we, we need that um, to drive it forward even further. So definitely excited. Well, thank you so much, um, Ethan, for joining us there. I just, uh, you know, we could make it an extra hour, but we can't do that. But I know there's so much to talk about, but thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our audience. If you learned something today or you laugh, please tell someone about this podcast. We're really trying to grow our followers. And this is not just about EO Atlanta or EO members. This is for any entrepreneur who's seeking inspiration in their journey of entrepreneurism. See you all next time. Thank you. And so that wraps up another episode. Thank you for joining. For show notes and other episodes, visit us at takingflight.live. For more information about EO Atlanta, visit eoatlanta.org. Special thanks to the following sponsors.